From beyond the farthest reaches of our galaxy they come. Two brains pulsing with a strange energy. These space brains come to share their love of science fiction movies. Hi, and welcome to Space Brains, the show where we joy watch sci-fi movies and then talk about what was good and what was great. I'm Sorry, and this is Mark. Hi. Uh, tonight we're talking about the 2017 sci-fi film Revolt, which was directed by Joe Mial, or Mial, I think. Miali. <laughs> hey, Joe, you're going to have to contact us and Definitely. correct us. We're never very good at the pronunciation, but reach out to us on instagram twitter facebook and let us know and revolt is a 2017 sci-fi film it's available on netflix so consider this your spoiler warning yeah so turn back now if you haven't seen the film because we're just going to be talking all about every part of it including any possible twists that may or may not occur definitely we're going to let you know the big secrets of revolt and then tune back in yeah. And hear what we have to say. Press pause, come back, and we're good to go. So, sorry, what was your number one takeaway from Revolt? One of the very cool things I noticed with this, number one thing I learned was that, first of all, you, you should always scar instructions into your arm. <laughs> yeah. It, I don't know. It would be helpful. The other nice thing here is... A little bit like Saw, that, that sort of instruction, isn't it? You know, the movie Saw, yes. or the, the Saw franchise. I'm sure somewhere along the line there's instructions. I can't, I can't believe he didn't have... He's down in the stomach. Surely of those he problems. could have had a, like a, a marker or something. Yeah. Don't they hand them like tactical texters? Can't they have a Sharpie? <laughs> <laughs> have a Sharpie for a soldier. Tactical te- I mean, if they're going to take notes in the field, yeah. they just pull out their combat knife and start carving. Start carving into their arm. <laughs> Stacking <laughs> Aliens <up>. invade. <laughs> okay, you know, so my number one, yeah. number one takeaway here was that, oh, I don't know. You should be clear on the instructions you carve into you do, your... you got, you got to be clear because yeah. you, don't, you don't get to a rubber. He was confused for 90 you don't, minutes, wasn't You it? don't want to cross yeah. them out and start yeah, again. That's right. <laughs> that was that's right. Right. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is... What else did you get? This is what this movie's Revolt. review is going to be like yeah. tonight, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Other, other things I got, got from Revolt, uh, it was, again, an amazing amount of science fiction film for what was clearly a, um, a, a tightly focused, sort of low-budget uh, production. Yeah, right. And we've, we've seen a couple of these where it's only afterwards that I've gone and have a look found out how how economically the film was produced yeah yeah because it looks fantastic and you take something that was 70 million dollars mm-hmm. spectral which was you know eye candy for sure yeah definitely and revolt and you think for what four times no no, no 10 20 <laughs> nearly 20 times the budget 20 times, sorry yeah, yeah. Getting up to 20 times the budget you know was it there wasn't 20 times, yeah, like there's, yeah, yeah. those incremental the quality, steps yeah. take more and more. So there's clearly a sweet spot. And that's yes. what I've noticed that here is like the Darkest Dawn as well. Yeah. There's clearly a sweet spot where you can get enough money to get everything you need mm. and then to get those each step above that for mm, effects and yeah. so forth costs, you know, uh, geometrically more. Yeah, so, definitely. And so that's, 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 you know, you make a good point, don't you, Aisha? I hadn't thought about that with... With uh, spectral being seventy mil and this one r- approximately four mil. Again, Joe, let us know if we're totally wrong. Um, but the idea of what, yeah, the bang for buck, you know, like you really, because you, I didn't think that when I watched this. I, I was pretty impressed from the minute it started. I was like, wow, this is action. You know, this isn't just sci-fi. This is action. You know, like, you know, the the gun shooting and the soldiers at the very beginning. It's it's pretty intense. You know, and explosions and this and that. And then that only gets multiplied throughout the plot that, you know, there's big action scenes and, you know, cars being blown up and, of course, the actual aliens themselves. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised this came in at this budget. I think they did very well. I think they've done very well. Uh, a lot of it comes through from choosing the right sort of story to film. Mm. Uh, obviously, filming a movie like Passengers mm. is going to cost a lot just because it's so beautiful yeah. in terms of its production of spaceships and so forth. Yeah. Uh, you choose your locations carefully. Uh, Revolt was set in Kenya. Yeah. I'm um, not 100% sure they actually filmed in Kenya, but they certainly, it certainly uh, looks extremely African landscapes, yeah, yeah. you know, from what I've yeah. seen of never having been there, but having yeah. seen documentaries and, and other movies that I do know were filmed there, like uh, District 9, for example. Yeah. Well, that's South Africa. That's South Africa, yeah. but, you know, you've, you've still got similar sort of um, the, the rocks and the, and the trees. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's always a trick of the trade, isn't it? I mean, I have been to Kenya briefly for a few days and also West Africa, and, I mean, it looked like it, but, again, it wasn't Nairobi. Nairobi's, like, a quite a big city, yeah, yeah, you know, like a modern fun, city, yeah. you know, and uh, so... But the film wasn't in Nairobi, but it was in sort of Kenya, and then they went across the border, didn't they, towards the end, so... But again, I think I think it was a pretty slick sci-fi action film. It really surprised me. It took me by a surprise. <laughs> it, it grabbed my attention from the opening shot, and very quickly I thought, "Ooh, you know, these films a little bit like um, the Beyond as well, where it's just you know, it's like action, action and soldiers and and mixed with." The military, you know, like, and and so you've got um, the sci-fi element, but you've got high intensity action. I mean, that uh, that first scene where he is in the prison, and you know, and he gets out by, you know, bringing all his militaristic soldier training. I mean, it's yeah, it's intense action. I thought, like, yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, and, it was very good. You know, choreographed that, action. You know, in that budget, you sort of wonder then, maybe some of the other higher budget films need to pick up their game they they're, they're going to justify their price tag but then you do think again you say passengers remember Jennifer Lawrence got paid 20 mil so it's yeah. it's five of these films or Jennifer Lawrence and it's a tough one isn't it because she obviously is worth every dollar and she brings people into the cinema but then you do think shit for the price that you pay her you can get five revolts you can get five of these movies happening for the price of just having Jennifer Lawrence on set for maybe three or four months. It's really interesting. It does, it? does remind how it me. Works. It's bizarre how it works. It reminds me of a little story about that Robin Hood King of Thieves with Kevin Costner. Okay. The cameo at the end of Sean Connery was something along the lines of, you know, multiple $12 million or something. I, I, yep. It's either $3 million or $12 million, but it was millions of dollars yeah. to get Sean Connery to come in at the end and perform the marriage at the end, like maybe suit maybe, cut. Maybe say a couple of sentences. Mm. The, so the story goes, yeah. he donated that money because he said, well, it's kind of funny that they'd have to pay me. But he, he has to charge that because that's what he is. Um, <laughs> he doesn't have to keep it. He can hand it on, but, you know. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. And I mean, and to, to be fair, though, at the end of the film when he came on and did that, uh, myself and the other people in the audience kind of... You went, oh, yeah, there's a lot of, kind of There's a couple, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, and I guess that's what you get with the big Hollywood films, don't you? But it is a funny little game that uh, they play uh, with the yeah the amount of money that gets thrown around, really, isn't it? And then when you compare it to a movie like this where you get to enjoy 90 minutes of sci-fi action, you know, another version of an alien invasion, you know, done quite well. And, you know, it's funny with the price tag, you know, the price of what it's worth to people. I was just looking, District 9 was a budget of about $30 million. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, again, that's quite uh, that's a that's a cheap budget. Mm. It used a lot more city locations, I think. Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and sort of had a, a fair few more critters. On yeah, probably at the one critter time. special effects, you know, for the time as well for two thousand. But it still, thirty million. But again, that was um, that's a cheap budget. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think I think it does. So my number one takeaway there, I guess, is. There's a lot of hope there for anyone who is an aspiring director uh, or writer. The fact is that you can actually write and produce quite good, uh, exciting, uh, visual effects filled, action oriented science fiction movies on a budget that is within the realms of possibility. You could get uh, you know, grants from local governments or, or whatever you like, uh, other world, yep. other life. Oh, yeah. Other worlds, the computer game. Other life 
you know, likewise got um, Lottery West and Screen West yep. grants to help it along the way. Yeah. And turned out a great film, another great film, uh, Revolt. Mm. And it's also surprising here that Netflix has managed to snap these up. Mm, yeah. And, you know, that's, so it's, it's showing a new economy, I think. I in, think so, yeah. In, market, in the market for films. So how about you, Mark? Would you like to classify this as a hope, a warning or an experiment? That's a good question, actually. Um, I think for this one, we are looking at hope, I reckon. Hope. Yep, I'm going hope. And that's because as humans, <laughs> I wrote down as a note when I watched this, and I think it's because we also like the darkest dawns a bit similar in that, you know, there's an alien invasion. Mm. And, and the, th the similarity in those two films is obviously alien invasion. The, the plot are very different, but it's I, I saw a similarity in that in both films, humans are like cockroaches, you know, like how humans treat cockroaches. Like yeah. you see a cockroach and you want to kill it or a bug of any type, you know, some people as well with mice and rats and stuff. It's a vermin. And it's like these aliens are coming here with superior technology and they're kind of treating us like vermin, you know, that, that was the common thing. And I think, I guess in this particular one, Revolt, the humans stand up together, you know, at the end and they fight back. And I, so I, I see a bit of hope in that because it's kind of almost like you can't, an alien invasion comes to Earth and these films, these stories are telling us that, well, they can probably wipe out 95% of the population pretty quickly, but it's that 5%. You kind of can't get rid of us. You know, you've got to kind of go around with the mortine spraying in the corners even and that. then even that doesn't bloody work. There's some that are immune to it. Well, if you see and one, then, one, one human running yeah. around, you know there's at least five more you've yeah. missed. And I love that idea in Revolt when he, when he did realise that he was the tracker and I thought humans have done that with mice. Like they put a tracker in one, lead us back to the pack of them and kill them all. Uh, and, and the fact that then still the humans came up with a way of, you know, at the end of this story, bringing down the mother uh, a mothership. I don't know if it was the mothership, but bringing down one of the motherships mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, with the electronic, electronic uh, magnetic pulse um, weapon. And uh, it was just like, but I really had that and I wrote it down like, we, you know, humans are kind of like rats or, or cockroaches. Like you can't get rid of us all. No, no. You know, and, and so I see that there's a bit of hope. Now that I've seen a couple of these films recently, The Darkest Dawn, Revolt, similar ideas, even with at some sort of advanced technology. You know, in this film, Revolt, I mean, when there's that scene, it's one of, I reckon it's a great scene, that herd of yeah. the drones. That's right. <laughs> you kind of think, really. yeah, yeah, you, but you kind of think like, shit, if that ran through a city, even through a cityscape, you know, like you would just annihilate humans. But then in this film, it's suggesting again, like we hide in the cracks, you know, we protect each other. Like, yeah, you're going to get some of us running out into the fields. You can't, you just can't get rid of us. There's too many of us, you know. Uh, it would, it, you've got to hunt us one by one, you know. I kind of laughed a little bit because you could imagine those drones like, after a hard day at the office, like sitting back having a cigarette going, how many did you get today? Yeah, I got 80 of them. How many did you get? Yeah, I got 30. We, we corralled up some and the mothership took up thing. The boss isn't happy. We're not getting enough of them. Oh, you know, like, the one that got away. Yeah, the one that got oh, away. Two of them ran down two, to a basement. I annihilated one of them. And <laughs> got one of them sucked out. The other, I don't know where the other one went. Oh, I just, no, and I gave up. I couldn't be bothered. Behind a car maybe? or <laughs> I couldn't detect him anywhere. You know, like I had a bit of, and that's not, uh, bad mouth in the film, but like I, was, I think it was it was quite realistic in that way that these poor aliens would be like us trying to kill cockroaches. You can't get rid of them all, and um, yeah, and I so I think there's a bit of hope there actually that maybe oh, if yeah. aliens come, and I've always I actually you know my sinister brain thought this with Independence Day all those years ago when I saw it as a kid at the cinemas. It was kind of like well in Australia we're so. Um, vastly uh, populated yes we've got big cities sparsely, and you would yeah. sparsely sorry yes. sparsely you're right um yes we've got big cities and you would annihilate most of the australian population but then we're so remote would those aliens be bothered like going all around the place you know well, and, and getting would, rid would of it, all of would us it be worthwhile the way no, want it, does it? Uh, it, it would it would it really i don't think it would be would it? once they take out most of the yeah, manufacturing yeah. It, let's face it if we lost our major manufacturing uh, areas our technology levels would drop. Drop hugely. Because can you tell me, Mark, how you would go about smelting iron into workable steel and then forging that into a car? No. No, no, because we, we can't. <laughs> no, so then it's, I'm stuck in an area, we, aren't I? The best we could do then is kind of 
slowly build up the first level of technology, which will allow us to smelt uh, iron into sort of a, a crude state, which will allow us to make the tools to build the next one. Yep. And it would be years of, and that's if you had the knowledge of yeah. how to do that, yep. Yep. which would be lost because the aliens have just burned up our internet. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I, so I do think hope. I do think hope. I think you can't annihilate the human race, I reckon. You know, I think it's just impossible. That's what these films are suggesting anyway, aren't they? Except usually in the ones that are the warnings, it says that we can annihilate ourselves. <laughs> yes, that's true. So in this, but I, I suppose in this one, particularly at the end, I liked that, you know, you had the American soldier, you had, you had some of the locals, and I guess in that sort of a, a medical evac centre, they were a bit like, you know, they, they weren't organised, there wasn't some big leader or anything like that. And then there was this one dude engineer, like one, just one engineer working on this weapon. And I, I guess there were, and then there's the crowd of people and they just kind of, they sort of worked together. And the old throwing the sticks and the stones at the drones, I kind of liked that because I kind of thought that's probably what humans would do. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, you know, they're, they're sick of it. And you, so you would get on. a bit fed up and you'd turn on them and, you know, like, and, and maybe the good old sticks and stones are what you need, you know, like stuff the power, of, you know, the bullets weren't doing much. Well, before we get on too much further, though, let's go through a bit of an overview of the story. Definitely. So that if you did see this movie a little while ago, you might be hearing little flashes of what we're talking about and getting strange memories coming back of having right. implanted trackers put into your spine. <laughs> I know that's what I had. But So it starts off, as we said, this uh, camera comes in following a bunch of soldiers running yeah. through a, I guess you call it a, a shanty town. Yep, in uh, Africa. In, in Africa. So... So let's be uh, terribly generic about this. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly, when I saw that coming in, uh, the the visuals they showed were like the, the tin roofs yeah. and the broken brick buildings. Yep. And uh, you knew that it was clearly not United States or yeah. Europe. Because as we said in, in the um, spectral, we, we knew immediately it was Europe because yeah. we got this shot of the, you know, this sort of four-story yeah. buildings with the the... the, the fancy archways and, yeah. and, and, yeah, and that sort of architecture. Yeah. So here we're in a country town. As yeah. I said, we're not, we're not in Nairobi because, no. you know, we don't have any proper paved streets or yeah. or like cars driving about the place and things. So, so we're in some little um, rural town. Soldiers are running through it. And at first you think, well, maybe they're putting down some sort of, uh, again, like a spectral, an insurgency. Mm. Perhaps yeah. there's been a... Uh, a guerrilla group or a, or a, an extremist yeah, movement yeah, or something. Yeah, it's a war, war torn. Except then you hear some weird noises. Yep. Uh, which I, I'm going to turn the, the dubstep aliens because <laughs> that's what yeah. it sounds like, this sort of wow noises. And then someone, get, you know, a couple of guys get disintegrated. They do. They're just we, gone. we can't see what's doing it, but yep. we do hear noises. The soldier then runs around, he, he takes aim, and then a blast comes out of nowhere and knocks mm -hmm. him flying. Yep. Next thing we know, he's waking up in a prison cell where he meets a, um, a, a one of these volunteer doctors. Yep. Um, Nadine, no. Nadia? Nadia. Yeah. Nadia. Yep. Uh, and they they escape from this jail where they've been locked in after defeating some rough necks of some description who are taking advantage of the situation. And you do, I think that was kind of telling us the setting because, there, I mean, it's a bit of a stereotype, but this idea of... You know, they're in Africa, there's wars, and then they're not being played fair like the US plays fair. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, there's no clear uh, agenda. No, like no. It's just like I think I think it was in a situation where where people had decided, okay, we've got to just do the best we can, yep. or now's our chance to get what we wanted to get or something. Yes. So they escape from the air anyway. And they and, and the only the only pop point I want to add to that is, of yeah. course, he doesn't know who he is. No, yeah, sorry. He yeah. works up with amnesia, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's totally lost at who he is. And, in fact, she says what he doesn't even know his name and on on the on his ripped military T-shirt says Bo. I reckon he's for Bonds. Yeah. <laughs> he was wearing a Bonds shirt. He was wearing a Bonds shirt in, the, in Australia. <laughs> but anyway, yes. so she says, let's call you Bo. And he's like, Bo it is. Bo it is, yeah. <laughs> so, so they run off basically and, and so begins a little journey as they, they hotwire a car or, or repair a tire on the car and they drive yeah. off uh, and once they get to know each other just a little bit more. And we're, we're in an apocalyptic landscape, aren't we? Yeah, but I wonder if that's just what 
people would think of you know, rural Australia as well. It's, it's true, but there is car. I mean, like even when they take their cars, there's there's four or five abandoned wrecked, cars, wrecked and, cars, and, and, and looks smoky like ruins yeah, and smoky things, ruins. Yes. And I was going to say that it reminded me a bit of something like The Walking Dead, where you know that people have packed up belongings. You know, like cars yeah, the, the got cars, stuff. The cars had stuff. Yeah, luggage and things, and they're all piled up. And then of course, and but they're deserted. So you think, they're oh, what's happened yeah. to people? And there was one car that had gutted people and things. Yeah, they had to pull a, a drink bottle out of yeah, a yeah. burnt up person's yeah. lap. So that was nice. Yes. We always like to see burnt up people <laughs> up <laughs> lasagna. So you won't be eating lasagna for a while now. No, you won't. So, so they drove off. They get to know each other a bit when they, they come into some gunfire and they crash their car. Yep. They're confronted by what's left of some of the Kenyan army. <laughs> the, the whole Kenyan army. And it's revealed that this soldier no, Bo can speak... The local language, yep. which I'm going to say was Kenyan. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong out yeah, there, yeah. because yep. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but let's no. face it, I know... In fact, most of what I know about Kenya is coffee <laughs> and this movie. Yes. So, okay. Okay. so you know, be gentle on me. <laughs> or just correct us. You know? correct Hashtag us, us correct us. If you you're know? a Kenyan and you're listening yeah, and you're involved right. in this movie... Please, let, let us, us know your experience. So... He confronts the, the military and he finds out uh, because of his, his tattoo on his arm is a symbol of a radar dish, yeah. which has got a strong American military presence there. Yep. And they say it was not touched by the invasion. So, you know, they reckon maybe Americans are involved. Uh, he goes, no, not possible. Shoots a couple of guys, sort of takes a gun, their, their car and stuff, and they drive off. Uh, well, they take, they take their Jeep. They take their Jeep, yeah. And, they drive off there and uh, when they get to some sort of factory or, or something or other. No, they, they come to a point where uh, they have to then go into a town. And then oh, in that the town... The mine. Yeah, the mine, there's mine, Sorry. warning the mine. So they go into the town when he said he wanted to avoid towns. But anyway, they go into this town and they come across like it's a long stretch of road that there's power cables all over it. And so they're a bit hesitant to drive down the road. And then with that, we have one of these alien drone robot things suddenly come up behind it and start shooting at it. Mm -hmm. So they fang it down that road over the power uh, cables. And, of course, the car kind of gets disabled. So they have to ditch the car. car. And they run into sort of like some abandoned factory part and there's a dad and and his oh, daughter. His daughter. And of course another drone is kind of cornering again you know the vernum. <laughs> Get out, kill them. It's a hard day today I had to kill a dad and a daughter. And the drone comes around the dad you know sacrifices himself. I don't know about that. Sorry, what do you think? I'd probably kick the girl out there first and run. But anyway, as a dad. Ivy, Ivy you're on your Depends own. which kid. That's always the thing, isn't it? Was well, well, uh, she being nice to If you've got a couple of kids. Was she yeah. being a real yeah, pain? Yeah, I know. So anyway, he sacrifices himself and then they, actually Nadia fires her weapon to try to save the girl and the drone kind of approaches them but then takes off, doesn't it? it yeah. It's sort of last minute. He had another no- uh, he had. Well, no, I heard, heard, heard. Neither of us can speak tonight. <laughs> heard in Illinois. Yeah. And ran off. And and then when they looked at it's implied the little girl was an island, yeah, I, I think. Because there was no shot, but no, she, she was gone. She was gone. Nowhere to be seen. And they so. were upset. Nadia they was were very upset. upset. So I, I think there's another case where there's a movie they didn't want to actually show children that's being right, murdered. That's right. This which, seems pretty no, you know, it's a bit of a no-go, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've got to say I, I don't blame them. It's, yeah. it's quite a brutal... It's one thing... And tragedy to see the the father yeah sort of jump out and try and draw attention away from his daughter and just and be shot. annihilated yeah as another thing again for to have some giant robot squish a <laughs> seven year old yeah it's just not <laughs> just stand on. that's that's more moving in the realm yeah. of sort of horror it is I think, it, it, it switches over doesn't it um, and this was meant to be sort of a this a, is a sci fi action a brutal yeah. but yeah. science fiction action yeah. yeah so there was that there, there's that scene and then they. I think they camp and they have a little bit of a rest, don't they? And then they're on the road. Oh, they find another car, uh, a red convertible. No, not yet. No, not no? yet. No, no, no. Before that's the poachers. Oh, uh, was it? I thought. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, yes, the so red the cars. You're not... you're ruining this. Man, I've, I've watched it just this afternoon. Just this so afternoon. um, no, they so they're they're she she says something about noise and they're on foot, and then 
their lure. Oh, yeah. And it's like a that? radio station saying that, you know, I think in that radio station they say downtown Nairobi's been annihilated or something or evacuated. Yeah, come down to the cradle of civilization. Yeah. <laughs> where it, it was and then, it, yeah, and there. it was a trap because all of a sudden these weird dudes come out of like hiding and um, they basically chain them and he realizes that they're poachers and mm-hmm. that they're going to be the bait and they're sort of in this you know, um, again, abandoned factory, but they're sort of in the bottom, in the middle of it. Uh, I, I kind of, this is a scene I really enjoyed. And um, they'd, they'd chain them up, you know, really solid big chains. And it's as though the, the tiger is coming into the gladiator arena. That's what that r- reminded me a bit of. Yeah, it was pretty you know, like that. And anyway, so then the drone comes around and, of course, it's a setup, and they all, the poachers are all set up in strategic positions and really well trained, aren't they? Like... They fire and then they one fires a missile rocket and then motorbike guys come through and then they've got some sort of power source that they yeah, try so to yeah was it get was it. that a power they're going to try and overload it was it a battery a power sink yeah. that they're going to drain I, power look I don't one hundred percent know and we we don't know I don't think but they they had I guess I guess again it's implying that these machines are running off some sort of power yeah because whenever they turn up point. things start sparking yeah and yeah and, dust and they and manage leaves start lifting off the ground and they manage to kind of destroy kill one but they don't they, uh, there's another one there's suddenly another and one on top of them and another one and then another one yeah um, and they all get kind of annihilated and he's watching it all very much you know like he's looking at it all and he busts his chops to escape out of the chains and yeah, he does his hand free from the yeah chains. and in that moment I think it's kind of like well why were they not annihilated and I think there's yeah. a bit of a hint in that scene that Something he's a bit different. There's well, something there's a, a bit. There's also when with the girl, it, it was walking up, and then it turns away and walks yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. So you're sort of starting to think, well, maybe um, he, you know, is he a bit different? You know, and he can, he's still again at this point in time, he doesn't know who he is, how, how it happened. He remembers being a soldier, but not really much mm-hmm. about it uh, and about his life. So that's when then they go on foot and then still sorry before this red car. Don't ruin the red car. I love the red the car. photographer. Oh yeah, they're crossing the bridge. Yeah. So they glint of the Yeah, I think it's a like. sniper, but it's a photographer mm-hmm. who's dying. And uh, he wants to trade them his photos and his camera for a bullet because he is dying. And um, the soldier, uh, Bo, doesn't want to do that because he's kind of he gets flashes of a, a wounded soldier. And so he's a bit sort of like, no, I don't want to do that. The photographer tells them that he's got photos of how to get to the satellite because that's where he came from. Mm. So if he, they just retrace his steps, they'll be able to. Um, and he also shows them photos of mine, uh, children that have been bombed by mines, like confronting the drones when yeah, everyone else kind of a, fled. The classic shot of the, yeah. the child standing on the car with a stone yeah. to throw the rock at yeah. the giant robot. And I think he says something about humans in that scene, doesn't he? He does say like that's, human, that's, that's the image that's going to spark the revolt. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And he's, you know, because that's the human spirit. Yeah, that's right. So then, and then, so anyway, uh, she, Nadia, kills him. <laughs> yeah, with an impressive chokehold. Chokehold. Which is a little <laughs> bit distressing because he flicks around and kicks his legs <laughs> a bit. And he's, he's none too happy about being no, choked to death. Even though he wanted to, I thought that was interesting. I mean, do you think that's realistic? Do you think you would, like, even if you've, Kind of resigned to well, yeah, die. I mean, like, got, do, if does you your do body? Lose, you've, you've, it's like if you try and hold your breath for as long as you can. It's true. There's isn't some it? point where you're stuck in that panicky feeling. Yeah, and, and your body fights back. You don't mm. even really. Yeah, it's nature, isn't it? So anyway, they uh, they do move on and they get that red convertible, the American muscle car. Mm. That he's like, it will work, and he gets it working. And uh, while they're driving, suddenly the radio picks up a lot of alien distortion. And so they stop, they kind of check it out, and they're like, oh, and there's a dead one that's making a bit of noise, I think. And then they suddenly notice this herd of these drones. Yeah, there's a the thunder and like yeah. a stampede. Yeah, stampede. It was amazing. I, I, this, again, this is a good scene, this one. And they so they bolt you know, to the car. What I liked about that was up until then, we've only seen one or yeah, two of these that's things. Right. And yeah, they're kind of a bit impressive because yeah. they're, they're these big robot things with a glowing crotch and uh, a weirdly asymmetrical sort of body with this cannon that disintegrates people. And you see, okay, that's a little bit frightening, but they do kill them with like a rocket launcher and a grenade yeah. and things. Yeah. 
So you're kind of thinking, what, what was the big deal? Yeah. And then you see this herd yeah. of hundreds, maybe thousands. Yeah. It was it was huge. It was, yeah. it was like a yeah stampeding caribou on the plains mm. of, of well presumably Kenya, but caribou don't do that. They they do it in Lapland. So, but it was just yeah, you got that sense of going, oh okay, so that's that's probably that's impressive. That's probably how they managed yeah. to do it by just this wall of these like very wall. tough. Yeah, you can take them out with a you know tank shell or a rocket. But there's just so many there that you wouldn't have enough shots. That's right. Before they disintegrate. You uh, yeah, that's right. They're quite good at that. Yeah. So, and they take off on foot, and they kind of uh, sorry, they take off on foot, and then the car, and then they head. They see a farmhouse, so they jump in the farmhouse. They get into the basement of this farmhouse, and this stampede kind of roars over the top of them, you know, ripping apart the house. And uh, with that, they they're kind of embracing Nadia and and um, Bo, and they're kind of having a moment, you know, she's looking at him pretty lovingly, and he is too, and they're sort of, you know, connecting, and with the house being ripped off, and the the drones kind of moving on, you think, oh, they've survived, and with that, no, there's a there's a ship above them, and mm. she gets sucked up, he doesn't, yeah, again, yeah. so that, then you're kind of, as an, as an audience member, alien you're like, alien spaceship sucking someone up, yeah, yeah. just, <laughs> She's up there, and he and but they didn't suck him up, and he you know falls back and lands on uh, a bit of shrapnel on his leg, yeah, yeah, and so and passes out unconscious. But then, as an audience member, you're like, oh, something is up with him. I don't know about you, but I was kind of thinking, sort of is he of, an alien? Like there was a, that was what I was kind of leaning towards. Well, a bit yeah, like, you got like, a bit has of he been implanted or when they escaped from the prison? Yeah, the guy tried to taser him. Yeah, and he grabbed hold of it, and and the electricity, the electricity went on his bounced hand, back. Yeah, and didn't stun him. Mm. He just kind of went, huh? He looked at him yeah. and then fought the guy off. Yeah. So at so that, the, that yeah. point you're sort of going, oh, okay, what's special about yeah, him? Is the, he a Terminator or something? Or <laughs> that's what? right. I, and, and to be honest, I was kind of thinking he's been infected by the aliens or something and and um, I didn't think Tracker. I was, I was thinking maybe this is going to be one of those films where it turns out he is an alien. You know mm. what I mean? He never yeah. knew it. Like he's, Maybe that's why it's called Revolt. Yeah. He was actually one of the aliens. That disagreed with it. That's right. So yeah. every now and then you get a movie where they have the alien invasion and you find out that's actually only one part of the aliens mm. want to do the invasion. There's that's others right. who are going, we think that's really quite morally objectionable. Yeah, so I, I just did start to think that. And it's a nice, you know, you do, do start to think that. So he's lost Nadia, he's injured, he presses on um, to the US base, you know, the satellite, mm. his yeah, tattoo. He's, he's a, a, Spray painting, resist, yeah, and an arrow pointing, yep. and he follows it. Oh, yeah. that's at the base. Yeah, at the, the base. base. At, yeah, yeah and at the base, he finds that it's been bombed and destroyed. Yeah, it's and gone. No one's there. Uh, but you're right. He finds an arrow that says resist. So he sort of comes up on a on a hill and it overlooks a, a town. Yeah, 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 a bit of a town. Yeah. The city. It's got a few bigger buildings, but uh, and it's got some proper streets and yeah. shop fronts and things. So again, he hobbles into that town, sort of looking for things and people and all that sort of stuff, and he collapses, um, kind of because it is deserted streets and stuff. And he sees some people run by, and a drone come by, and then a big white light, and it's as though the drone collapses, yeah, stumbles backwards, yeah. and has a sit down. And so he's a bit he's a bit shocked by that. But then at this, but then the opposite happens, which is then suddenly we have these drone spiders come out of nowhere. And they, one of them runs up to him and we see it scan him. Yeah. And it sort of, you know, sees his skull and he's inside him and it, it's happy and it walks away yeah. or creeps away, crawls away. Um, and he's a bit baffled. And at the same time, there was a couple of people spying this situation. They ran up to him and they kind of rescue him. And they, the next thing you know, he's waking up and he's, they're wrapping up his leg, they're protecting him and he's kind of in this makeshift hospital. Uh, where there's lots of other injured people and also other people around. Uh, and the people that rescued him came up and speak to him and uh, they're, they're, they're a bit baffled why he was not um, destroyed. Destroyed, yeah, the, they were taken, sucked up. Yeah, but at the same time, though, you know, and he's thankful. He tells them that he's American but doesn't really know much about his situation. Um, and then they start giving him a bit more information. And because he wasn't... Uh, taken, they say, well, we should take you to the engineer and, and give and see what he thinks. And so he's brought to this engineer character who's w- working on a, um, a bomb, 
but not a regular bomb. No, no. An EMP device. Yeah, yeah. So something different, which is which is clever again, matching back to all this electricity idea, and um, they then they're, then they're a bit unsure of uh, who he is, aren't they? Yeah, and, and he thinks about it and actually. He said, oh, because the, the, a whole bunch of herd of them are coming into yeah, the city. Yeah, that's right. And that's when he's that's like right. thinking Sorry, yeah. and he thinks, oh, they followed me. You know, yeah. what, why would they have come in here at this time? And he gets the yeah. flashback, doesn't he? he that's when he, he, he sees he back sees to... The drawing of a particular yeah. type of drone with yeah. two overhanging sort of praying mantisy type limbs. Yes. And then he, he remembers that, yeah, in fact, he was uh, picked up after executing a soldier who was dying poorly, he got picked up and had uh, had yeah you know, some oral surgery. <laughs> yeah, you know, some tentacles went into him. Make of that what you will. Yeah, and deposited a tracker on his spine. Yeah, and that's that, that's when he carved an arrow into his arm, pointing to his tattoo yeah. of the um, radar, telling him. Yeah. That's his base. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why, again, of course, you'd think maybe he could have had a texter somewhere. Or... <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, was he Was he actually, was the arrow, and maybe Joe could tell us what the answer is, was the arrow more like pointing at himself? Like, I, you know, there's something wrong with me. Yeah, I know. You know, like, was it was that what the arrow was? I thought, I thought it was. Before he passed out, he could have written a longer message, couldn't he? You know, like infected. <laughs> Not with a knife. You know, something. <laughs> he wouldn't have woken up. <laughs> yeah. um, it appears that I have been infected by something. It yeah. seems to be in my spine. I don't think I should go and well, ah, <laughs> right. lay down. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he, uh, so anyway they, they kind of like draw guns on him when he reveals this information and then they realise that, well, he would be the perfect person to detonate this uh, EMV, EMP, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to spit over that a couple of times. So the engineer's pretty happy with that. They're pretty happy with that. They know the drones are attacking. It's the first time the drones are kind of coming back to town, they say. And these drones like to round up a crowd of people. That's what they also reveal yeah, to us. Random. And they round them up and then the ship kind of comes and... <laughs> They're sucked up. Yeah. You know, so I suppose it makes sense, you know, round up as many of the vermin as you can in sort of a, a area and then just suck them all up. And we never found out what they're doing with no, these people. No, we don't know what they're doing with In them. fact, I watched a movie called, I think it's called Undead. It's an Australian zombie film. Okay. Uh, it's notable because on the cover there's this fellow who's like stuck two double barrel shotguns together to make a four barrel shotgun. <laughs> it's a bit of a comedy. It's yeah, it's. yeah. Not a, sort of, it's not a hundred percent serious, but it's not a hundred percent comedy. Yeah, sort of a that sort of thing. And in that, there's not just zombies outbreaking, but then there's also aliens, which are sucking people up into the sky yeah. like a beam of light surrounds them. Yeah. Up they go. Yeah. And this guy's convinced that the aliens have released, are invading, have released a virus, right. causes zombies, and sucking up people as they go for further refinement of this zombie, zombie virus. Uh, I'm going to give a spoiler on this. So if you're thinking of watching Undead, it's a good movie even even with this spoiler. He finally gets sucked up and he discovers that, no, the aliens accidentally released this virus. They've been sort of chasing this meteorite from one of their experiments, which landed, and they've been trying to clean up. Right. So they've been sucking people up and disinfecting them and holding them up above this sort of uh, magical cloud, if you like. Uh, in, induced cloud that they have created of course to uh, clean these things and it rains and that's like to, to disinfect it's a disinfectant rain and they keep pulling humans up to keep them safe and disinfect them while they're trying to get, get the zombie invasion down and then he, of course it's, it's revealed these zombies become uninfected and return to being humans Yeah, and we've got to think about all those ones that he chopped up with a chainsaw and shot in the head and <laughs> But yeah, it's right. quite a funny movie. So I'm wondering here in Revolt, you could well imagine that they're sucking up all the humans. Yeah. And they're, they're uh, treating a disease that the aliens accidentally released maybe. And so in the sequel to this, we find out that destroying that ship, they just killed you know, thousands of lives needlessly. But again, it's, I mean, with aliens, we don't need to know, do we? We don't really, you know, it's the no. mystery of aliens. I mean, you know, the whole, the old anal probing, the old, you know, like taking people in the middle of the night. Like it's a mystery. We well, don't you, need you to know. The, the rats who see the 
other rats get caught and yeah. trapped and taken away. They, they do they be, think the same? What are they doing? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's Feel right. a better life, surely. So then, anyway, because we know the drones like, like to round people up, that's what's going on. At the same time, um, the medical centre, you know, the, the makeshift medical centre, they're like, we've got to evacuate because they're coming. And they realise that, in fact, the spider drones are getting closer and closer. They're, you know, creeping up the walls and up the drains and stuff. Um, so Bo and the engineer and a group of other guys, they're heading out to the crowd because the engineer explains that like, we've got to be right near this mothership for it to work or you know, the spaceship for the EMP to work. So they head out there into the crowd. Um, there's a bunch of drones. Uh, at the same time, the spiders attack. A couple of people get annihilated. Um, the, the guy at the medical centre is a bit of a scary scene that, you know, he's in the garage and there's a spider drone in there and a couple of people get annihilated. He makes it back. And again, like a classic ode to Alien and that. Oh, yeah, they're, they're in the air vent. The, yeah, the air vents. And you see the air vents like being dented and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, you know, and it's quite, there's a couple of scenes there that suddenly the, the tone is a bit more creepy. Like, it's mm. a, you know, more than the action style of it. Um, and Bo and the engineer, they're, they're trying to get this big weapon into the crowd and, of course, the drones are annihilating all the guys carrying it. So, you know, the engineer's left on his own dragging it along um, and Bo realises, well, we've got to get the crowd kind of moving and so he sort of throws a bomb, uh, you know, a grenade, the last grenade they have at one of the drones and that wipes that one out and so the crowd can disperse and it causes enough disruption and the ship is coming in, getting closer and closer, so we know they're going to, again, suck people up. Um, and the drones kind of turn on them, and you think the crowd is dispersing, but he, in that moment, decides, I'm going to be a caveman and throw a rock. Well, and he, he was inspired by the child. Yeah, he was. He's he going, was, what can yeah. I do? Yeah, that's what right. What can I do to resist this? So yep. like, I've got to... I've got nothing something. else. I've got to do something. And he's going to inspire them, because yeah. this is what he, he chucks the rock, he, he climbs got a off the... The robot uh, drone, which distracts it from shooting the uh, the engineer, and it looks at him and scans him and doesn't do anything. Yeah. And all the people around so suddenly pick up rocks and rocks sticks and, sticks and things, and start starts them. throwing it in and, and jumping in there. And the drones, bless their little hearts, their guns don't fire that very fast. No. The terrifying no. weapons, because they just disintegrate people. Yeah. But they don't shoot very fast. Yeah, and I think they're a bit confused as well by the sticks and stones, well, they, to be honest. <laughs> You know, like they're they're a bit. They're, I, it's I a bit like a rat like tapping your shoe, isn't it? It's a bit like what what do we, we get do now? Swarmed by rats yeah. in trouble, but but I think these these drones are used in mass yeah. for actual assaults. Yeah, and then they're just relying on the terror That's right. of them. You know, they just they could shoot fast enough to just wipe out enough people that yeah, you know, people just go, I'm not going to run because yeah. it's oh, instantaneous God, death. Yeah. But the moment the whole crowd turned on them, there's only four or five of them there. Yeah, that's right. They're in a bit of trouble. They were just they couldn't shoot the people yeah, fast enough. Basically, right. the people were were no longer terrified. It, it is like a swarm of rats. Like yeah. that's the thing. If you suddenly found just, you can you can kill a couple of rats, but suddenly if there was thirty or forty of them at your feet, well, that's you're in a bit of trouble. What's worse, uh, a Godzilla-sized rat or a thousand rats the size of Godzilla? Or Godzilla's the size of rats. I don't know. You, that's yeah, very no, confusing. So yeah, yeah. You need to oh, think that okay. one's no, right. Well, that is, oh, <laughs> I, I think I know what you're trying to say, yeah. but you've just said that really, very that strangely. Was, that was... Um, so anyway, he, he he's sort of like, he, he's distracted them, everyone's attacking them, um, but the weapon's the weapons been tapped as well, hasn't it? And it's not quite firing. Yeah, he said and the battery so, contacts aren't yeah, working anymore. So then he becomes a conductor, which yeah. again has been sort of implied, as you said, yeah, from the start of the prison. His electrical yeah, encounters in yeah. the past. So he yeah. can kind of, you know, he sacrifices himself, good old you know, self-sacrifice hero. He grabs the power, he grabs the, the EMP, and he is a conductor, and the electricity runs through his body, he screams in agony. Um, and then boom, you know, we have a big yeah. white light and the the drones, everything collapse and the mothership lights go out. The whole town goes out, I think. And we see the mothership kind of drift off out of control and hit the big nuclear power um, that's in the town and blow up. And uh, the spider drones all just, you know, as they're about to attack, uh, you know, yeah. they're all kaput. Everything Pro- is kaput. Proving that they were unmanned drones. That's right, and not- yeah. Uh, independent they weren't independent robots they weren't like actual aliens yeah uh, running them they were which which in itself is 
freaky, but isn't it? You know, like, I mean, you think about drones and you're like, yeah, there's maybe some sort of pilot back on the ship or mm. are they just like, is it an algorithm that they're just, you know, search and destroy? It, it did, to me, it it seemed more like algorithmic yeah, sort of work yeah. that maybe even, <clears throat> they this, maybe even the controller spaceships weren't manned. Yeah, you, yeah. They could be entirely right. unmanned they just and they antennas. were just following a, yeah. a program of sucking people up, rounding people up, suck yeah. them up, shoot yeah. anything that disagrees yeah. with it. And Which in itself is creepy, isn't it? You know, yeah. People could annihilate the whole human race. and um, It makes well, a certain sense that because you could be able to send those ships ahead of time. That's right. Don't risk your, your precious, your actual precious humans, aliens. Yeah, your aliens, your biological beasts. Anyway, so then, and then he comes back to it um, after all that's destroyed. They kind of, I think the engineer and maybe the other guy help him to his feet. He's okay. So Bo's good. Very dirty though. He has a flash of Nadia. And, and again, I liked this because... She doesn't. She doesn't come back, you know. But it, he sort of remembers her, you know. He yeah, remembers he her presence. Yeah, you know, you know, I think they also sort of indicate then that he's getting back much yeah, of his, his memory, memory. His return. Yeah. I think maybe it's short. The the tracker has been yeah. shorted out. Or something. Yeah, something. Yeah, it's implied that maybe he's he's back a bit. And um, and he does. He says to them, "Oh, I grew up on Washington Parade or something like that." Doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he gives a little address and says yeah. he remembers learning to ride his bike there. That's and right. That's where he lived. Yeah. And they ask him. And what's your name? And he pauses for a moment. And he says, "I think I'll just stick with Bo." Bo, yeah, yeah, Bull, Bull, yes. <laughs> as Lee uh, Lee Pace says. And um, yeah, he he he. They sort of stumble off, don't they? And the crowd stumbles off. And you you are, I think, again, as I said, you you're given a feeling of hope. That's what yes, I felt. Like I felt like you know we as humans could fight something like this. And that that's the end. Credits. Roll credits. Roll credits. We find out that. Uh, Joe Mayal is the big director and he also wrote it with Rowan Atoll and then we get, you know, our cast and, and credits, etc. So, yeah, fantastic sci-fi action film, yeah, I reckon, It was Revolt. a good, good bit of fun, I have to say. I, I love that um, the sound that came with the aliens, that was quite... It's a common one with aliens, yeah. but it worked in quite well here. Which brings me to... Um, Best scene. Well, actually, you know what we skipped last week? Relative position. Did we? We didn't. We didn't rank the darkest dawn. I'm afraid. Didn't we? Oh my goodness! Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. We'll have to revisit that. I have not planned where this goes in my ladder either. Uh-oh. To be honest, <laughs> um, I'm not sure where my ladder sits on the, at well, the moment. We'll... But I think this one. This one. Yeah. This one was fun. This. I. I liked this. Um, Gave me a good feeling. I was pretty happy at the end of this. Yeah, it was great. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I think it has to go in the middle somewhere for me. I'm not too yeah, sure. I, but... I'm going to put it just after Passengers. No. No, I'm going to put it up there. Uh, I think I actually liked it just a little bit more than Spectral. Yes, that, that would be it. It's called... Revolt. Revolt. <laughs> so there we go. We got I think one. I might have to put my ladder on um, socials. I think because I just I need to look at it again. But I, I reckon I reckon in the middle. I reckon in the middle. This is this was fun. It was good. I liked the action. You know, it reminds me of the eighties action. Oh, that, I, I want to bring up about the music on that. Have you noticed a bit of the soundtrack had a bit of that sort of late eighties, early nineties electronica feel? Yes, it did. Didn't a bit it? Of, it did. Bit of it did. synth going on in there and. Yep. I think so. Yeah, so I think in the middle of my ladder, I reckon in the middle rungs somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll have to think about that. I'll post that on social. So anyone listening out there, check out our socials. I'll put the ladder up there in the next couple of days. So let's get stuck in the best scenes, <laughs> worst scenes. Yeah, I, look, I've probably mentioned a couple during that, but I like to write at the start, the locked up in prison. Yeah. I, I like that idea. It reminded me a bit of a short film of a guy waking up, amnesia, He's locked into prison automatically. You know, your main character, he's stuck, but he doesn't know who he is. So what's his power? How he's going to get out? Um, also, where we don't really know what's going on in the world he is. Uh, and then the fact that he's even lost. And once he starts talking to Nadia, you know, she's telling us the threats that are out there. Humans are worse than the invasion. And he's like, what invasion? Oh, you don't remember the invasion? You know, like it's nice kind of revealing of information, I yeah, felt. We didn't have, um, we didn't have to have the news on the TV no, in the background. No, no. Yeah. And he's trying to figure out who he is and and um and I love I love scenes like this where you do get a human element, i.e. these gorillas come in 
And, you know, she she said it very clearly. You know, she's like, if they come in here, they'll kill you and they'll do worse to me, you know, and we sort of see that pretty quickly. Like the leader's like, she's mine and, and all that. And then he revealed, well, he speaks the mother tongue. You know, he speaks the Kenyan language, if yeah. that's right. And um, he kind of, you know, and it's also good because they're like, oh, he's American. He might be worth some money. You know, he might be worth something. Keep him alive and I'll, I'll do what I like to the lady. And um, and then he, he fights them and it's a, it, was a, it was a great scene, that one. It was really well choreographed. He, he, he catapults backwards out yeah, the window, leaving yeah. her to her own device. Yes, and, and then we realise she's actually quite tough. You know, she had the glass, she stabs that guy in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, he's pissing out blood out of his balls and at the same time she shoots the other guy. Uh, then the guy still attacks her again, you know, like whacks her against the wall. Um, and then I think she still defends him off by memory. And, yeah, um, pushed him, but grabs the gun off the guy yeah, that she shot. Yeah, shot him, you know, shoots him once or whatever. Away. Yeah. yeah, and then he's been fighting a couple of them and then hiding from a drone. Uh, and then he get he kind of comes back and she's like, oh, you came back for me. So, yeah, that was a great scene. I, I thought that was a really great opener. You know, it's not the opener of the film, but it was a really great early scene. Yeah, it's great for setting setting the stage, giving us the information that there was eight days ago these aliens yeah. turned up and just basically, you know, did whatever they wanted. Uh, it was unclear if, you know, what happened to the rest of the world, except yeah. it was particularly bad. Yep. Because they went further, you know, the high population areas. Yes. Which would explain then why the film is starting set in this rural Kenyan sort of town. Yeah. Or little village uh, rather than New York or someplace. Mm. And it, that's debated, isn't it, from the start of the film to the end. They sort of, you know, she says to him, there's no, there's nothing, there is no US, you know. And, yeah. and um, he's like, no, there would be. You know? and, then, and then later I think it's like, there is no Pentagon. He's like, no, there would be. You know, yeah, and they, we they sort of think all that, the don't satellites we? Drop out all the satellites. Sky. And you're like, wow, if all the satellites did drop out of this, this, the uh, sky, you're American, you're in Kenya, and you're, you can imagine that. You know, US soldiers are positioned all over the world at different times. Uh, yeah, you're there to protect, you know, that particular area and time, and then all of a sudden you have an alien, but you're stranded there, aren't you, you know? Yeah. So it's quite realistic that way. So that was a scene I really liked. What about you? Uh, I like the, the poachers scene. Yep. Yeah, I like uh, that it was, too. It was a great sort of build-up where they're taken prisoner, and you're thinking, what what on earth are they taking these prison, people prisoner for? What could they, you know, what benefit could they gain at in the middle of an alien invasion, in the middle of a uh, burnt-out old you know, town in the middle of nowhere, you know, it just sort of seems mysterious. Yeah. And you're thinking, are they going to be taken someplace good, someplace bad, and they chain them up? Yeah, and, and it starts to become very obvious there. Like, like I said, it's very arena-like. Yeah. It's in a um, some sort of a, a multi-story building that's been yeah. gutted. Yeah. And the roof's all collapsed and one wall is collapsed out. So it actually is almost an amphitheater yeah, arrangement. And that's when, yeah, it's, they say they're poachers and they're, they're hunting where they prey. Yeah. It was quite good, and you say get that little hope. You know, the one comes out and they have this coordinated attack, and the rocket disables, and they chuck the cable onto it, and it brings it to his knees, and it, it gives you that sort of sense of oh, this Maybe fight, can. this fight can be yeah. won. Yeah, and then of course, one after another, more drones turn yeah. up, <laughs> and it you know, you realise that okay, well maybe, maybe you can if you're coordinated, but. You know, these guys sort of ran out of resources, I think. Yeah. Weren't prepared for so many drones to turn up. Uh, so that was it was quite good. It was a good bit of action. Yeah. It told a bit more of the story, gave a bit more yeah. of the background of of what sort of actions people were taking and, mm. and how it was progressing. And, and probably, again, like, you know, we've, we just said as well towards the end of the plot, but that idea that you could we've missed the invasion, but you could imagine a big military presence would, yeah, bomb the crap out of a bunch of these drones but if there is hundreds of them if there is thousands of them you know it, it's kind of a war of attrition isn't it and you know not, and they're not suffering morale no no that's right they're just coming one after another you know and so this is this, this is what happened in the game of thrones when the night walkers army was yeah in. that's right night king's army was attacking the dragons are strafing through they're just yeah. blasting but they don't care. They just no. keep coming. They just keep coming. And these drones would be the same thing. You'd, you'd, yeah. you'd knock down the first 
five thousand, six thousand. Yeah, and you're thinking we're making the, a good the twenty thousand behind them just keep running forward. They don't forward. care. They're not emotional. If they were humans, yeah, you just knock out the first five thousand, and the rest of them sort of go, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not okay. going I'm, forward. We anymore. need a different plan. <laughs> that's that's yeah. not going to work. And you end up with trench warfare like that's in right. World War One, where the yeah. soldiers would just refuse to get out of the trenches. That's it. The only reason they got out was because they were threatened with being shot. Yes. By their own commanders. Yeah. So I think I think again that poachers scene was a good example of. Um, you know, the reality of what you're fighting, you know, that these drones are pretty relentless. Yeah, it was, it was a good, good little scene. Well well done. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I like that scene. I like the stampede scene. The stampede well. scene. That was, was great, and we talked about that again, before. Again, it gave you that sense of uh, size and, and why, how they could possibly... Could you imagine that, yeah, like I said, running through a major city, just yeah. thousands of them charging yeah. through down every street... Shooting into yep. every house, yep. Yep. blasting stuff yep. with a mothership floating along behind it, sucking, sucking up anyone off. that was that rounded up. Way. Yeah, and I mean, I think like that's the thing. The poachers scene reminded me of Gladiator. You know, mm. the the film Gladiator as well. That that Russell Crowe um, one, and you know, in the middle with the tiger and stuff, and it reminded me of that. The stampede reminded me of like the Lion King. You know, like you know, because it's this huge, you know, relentless. And that's the thing, they run into that house and they're all running over the top and you knew the house was going to be ripped apart. But it's not like they're stopping, you know, it's almost like they're out of control, you know. Yeah, they're, they're following they're, their target. Yeah, they? and, and you almost think, well, wherever they're heading is in trouble, you know. Like, and, and it remind, you know, the, the film had these little moments of little homages, I think. Um, and it was also, it was probably a nice uh, correlation to the fact that we are in Kenya, you know, like we are in Africa, you yeah, know, like a stampede of drones <laughs> instead of like a buffalo you know like yeah. it's it's that. and the film did have some shots throughout i've seen other films do this a lot where you know you do have artificial intelligence or something like this drones uh aliens whatever and it's kind of you then have some shots of nature and this film did it you know there was a scene where he did look at the i think it was buffalo by water buffalo maybe and they were all standing there was a giraffe as well yeah yes. and they're kind of like peaceful and quite often that's what a film like this does. Like you, you have all this military violence going on and then the animal kingdom is kind of like going, what the hell's going on? Yeah, this, you know? is, this, is, like, this is humans' problem. This is a human problem. Like yeah. They're not coming after us. And like the same, you had birds. Like There was a few scenes where birds were sailing around in this film. And, that's what and the giraffe says, yeah, I've got no known problems, but alien invasion. Alien, not they're not after us. <laughs> so, yeah, I liked that as well um, as, best, as good scenes, yeah. Yeah. That, well, I was going to say that one as well, so let's take that. And I do like, I did like the dubstep rave party at the end. That's, yep. Because when I was watching it, I'd already made this association with that uh, that sound, sound of like, uh, you know, like a dubstep yeah, yeah. type of track. And with those four or five drones standing around the crowd mm. and lights were on them and the crowd was all sort of moving and the music soundtrack score melded then with some of the sounds of the robots. I got just for a moment that briefest flash of uh, an alternate view on this is a dance party. <laughs> like if those drones were standing still and they were just kind of like uh, props, as you see sometimes these big dance parties have like these amazing like spiders or spaceship yeah, sort of yeah. themes. Well, they do these days, don't they? Yeah, yeah it, it, a big rave in Germany that has that big spider thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, it... it could easily have been mistaken for that if you took a still shot of that and mm. had the sound effects going. Well, instead of like, you know, if it was a comedy movie version, you could like those, they, the thing is instead of a EMP, it's like he puts on a blaster of music where the drones like go, hey, and they start dancing. Set, set, <laughs> so, some so sort of like, put, yeah, and they're like, what the, and they, but they're just so drawn in by the music, you know, and they start like tapping their drone feet, you know. Well, that's, have <laughs> and, you seen Hotel Transylvania? Three, I think it is. Yeah, I think that's what they do in that, don't they? The yeah, well, you, you know, good being you know, being kids, they have, they have yeah. a DJ off. Oh, the DJ saves the, the day, doesn't where the, it? Where yeah. the, the uh, bad guy is playing some hardcore that's right. um, trans, you know, so what do you call that? Yeah, hard house type stuff. Mm. And then the, the other guy's playing sort of easy listening 70s and 80s <laughs> classics. Yeah, so what about anything stick out that kind of was Worst a bit of a bug sense. to bear for you? Anything in there? In yeah, the I suppose it was just... And, and, they, and they... Good old um, Miali saved it. 
and at the end there, when they're in the house hiding from the stampede, and it sort of goes quiet, and they, they have that moment, they're looking at each other, and it's like, really? You, this is when you're going to stop and have a bit of a snog and make yeah. out? Like, <laughs> and he, he saved it, of course, by having the the, the spaceship sucker off. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I should, watch, sounds, I should watch my phrase. Yes, you, know, you should. That just, uh, did sound a little Remove weird. her from the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a, then that's, <clears> what yes, say, that's what the aliens did. <laughs> but yeah, I, and again, it's one of those things that I can appreciate uh, the the requirement there to give us uh, the main character who is basically an amnesiac this connection yeah, to another human. other human life. Yeah. So that, and he has these flashbacks later on when he is victorious or is trying to be... Before actually, he looks and sees the other doctor, dark hair woman, and who turns and it's not yeah. Nadia, of course, it's not. But that's kind of part of that connection there. Yeah. That okay, no, I've got to help these people. Like mm. I can't, I can't just run off and lead them away. I've actually got to try and do something proper. Yeah. So I can understand the the um, story purpose of it, but other films often fall into this same sort of place where you've got to try and accelerate some sort of moment, and they they often have it. At least they didn't have the, the old trick of they trip over and one falls on top of the other and they look for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And you're like, oh, geez, really? How many times yeah. you going to do that trick? It, it was it was similar earlier to that, wasn't it? That When that dad and daughter scene and they almost got taken. Like, I liked... It could have gone cheesy, but I liked the, the decision. She, she sort of, like, really grabs him. Yeah. You know? and, it, and to me it was like... Well, there was enough of an emotional beat there. They yeah, just liked, saw the fi- father yeah. annihilated. And I think the impression, as we said, was the daughter was too. And it could have quite easily been a cheesy snog scene or, you know, even just looking at each other doughy-eyed. But she instead, like, they, they do hug, but she really is grappling him. And, and I've, I noticed that too when I was watching. Like, I it wasn't that. just kind of a, a hand on the yeah. shoulder. She, like, took a fistful of his shirt yeah, and kind yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah yanked at him yeah. like like there's a, an expression of passion and yeah. and that portrayed that quite well I, yeah. I i did now that you mentioned it, i did actually notice that particular yeah. grab and yeah it had yeah. that effect of yeah she's they've, they've had this uh, intense moment where i guess it's they're sort of looking for a bit of comfort mm. yeah. from each other going this was a terrible thing yeah. we just saw yeah grab another person yeah. and, and be because um, I, I suppose the the defense of Snogging and the defense of you know you know that whole kind of like let's get it on after we've just survived something is there is a there's adrenaline that pumps through mm-hmm. humans as you know we're pumped up you know life or death scenario and I guess when that deflates you have to kind of expel that energy and I guess that's always the defense of hey let's snog it on or let's mm-hmm. get it on uh, because we've got to expel this kind of fight and flight energy out of us but. Quite often, I, I agree, like movies, especially Hollywood movies, we find that it is a bit cheesy. You know, they bring up the romantic yeah. music and it's a nice, big, passionate kiss. Whereas, again, like, that's the thing. I felt that that scene was, was really nice because here is a life. They've witnessed something quite traumatic and they've survived it. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to hug you because you're. I need a human touch, but it's not a sexy you know, romantic hug, it's kind of like, oh, you know, like I'm going to, I'd rip your shirt off in a physical expression of getting mm-hmm. that emotion out of me, you know. Um, and it was the same, like I agree, like all the drones running over the house, um, we might die, we might not. Again, cheesy film, oh, let's make out while this is happening to relax the tension. But, uh, and it was heading that way, but then, yeah, yeah she's, was, she's, you know. What we will say from that, Evacuate yeah. from the scene. <laughs> but I mean, to be to be fair, a movie has what an hour and a half yeah. to to achieve a certain number of goals. That's right. And yeah, and, and I suppose that that is what that, that is part uh, of separates uh, you know the real cinematic greats that everyone talks about for decades and decades yeah. afterwards is it ticks it's, those boxes. You've got to get each of these beats, each of these parts of the story across in a way that. Uh, is natural and flowing and works it. and sometimes you get a bit there where it's kind of well we're going to have to accelerate something here yeah. for the sake of having because we need that connection we need that point yeah. uh, and I think this almost went too far but yeah. the uh, having her taken away without having even had a kiss I, I think it was good because it could have been easy they could have 
had a bit of a snog and uh, whatever and then a little bit later yeah she's taken yeah or something but yeah. this and then it's uh, like oh no the love of my life has been stolen you you've yeah. known her for like a couple of days yeah. at best <laughs> you know yeah. you, you haven't really form, formed that much of a bond here but it took it at just the point where in fact uh, the the tension was not resolved yep which I think yeah brings that connection, which is yeah. which is okay. and I mean likewise again at the end you could have her come back. You know the mothership has crashed, and survivors walk out of it, and she is one of them. You know, and then they embrace. But no, the film didn't do that. You know, the the, the mothership has crashed and blown up, and he he has a memory of her. You know what I mean? Like he has them, and I like that. again I like that. You know, it's so you, as an audience you get the flash of her. It was all little cute moments of her smiling and fluttering her eyelids and stuff, which is fine. Like, it's absolutely fine. That's what he's going to remember, as we all do remember those little highlights of each other. And it's it's like, well, that's great. But then, but it's not cheesy that she's suddenly back alive, you know. <laughs> so, again, I think the... Mind you, it would have been interesting had he, you know, what sort of character would he be if the moment he thought of us... Mm, that time we reached over the lasagna car to grab the drink bottle. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that time I shot those soldiers to... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and what about there. <laughs> what about that bit where you stabbed the guy in the dick? Yeah, yeah. That's the mm. bit I, such oh, memories we that's, have that's together. Right. Well, it'd be a different type of film, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting to find out what sort of film that would be, but there we go. So <laughs> we'll move on a little bit. Yeah, I think, uh, and we're talking about the EMP device. Yes. So I thought it'd be worthwhile to talk a bit about that because there was some a couple of points they made which were very accurate and quite good so one point he made the engineer was just putting the final touches on and he said oh the the last experiment worked we've been trying to dial in the right frequency mm. and this is an important thing because an emp electromagnetic pulse is a sudden pulse of electromagnetic energy right and electromagnetism is one of the four fundamental forces that make up the universe and it is responsible for almost everything you care to think of in the macro scale world so larger than atoms so uh, and, and not including gravity mm -hmm. so the fact that we're sitting on chairs is thanks to electromagnetic force yeah because it's the the repulsion and the attraction between charged particles so it keeps the chair solid and gives it its shape and keeps us solid and it's much stronger than gravity uh, you can tell that because if you were to jump out of an aeroplane and you know you, you accelerate really fast from gravity but when you hit the ground you don't just keep going through the ground you stop very quickly much stronger than gravity has been able to accelerate you and likewise it's probably fair to say that from gravity alone you you're not going to be able to create an impact strong enough to break down the electromagnetic forces you're not going to cause a nuclear explosion Okay. due to impact from gravity alone. And I, and I say that with the caveats being that you, if you had like a black hole involved and... But let's, let's just talk about reasonableness yeah. here. Yeah, so, Norm so, the normalistically. And, and the electromagnetic force is carried by photons. So it's interesting to think then that the light we're seeing is electromagnetism and it's interacting with our eyeballs and letting us see stuff. And the light bounces off things and a part of it gets absorbed and when it's absorbed into uh, matter, so I'm looking at a purple wall, so some green light, so allowing red and blue light, for example, to bounce back, we see purple. The green light has actually gone into the wall, uh, has been absorbed by electrons in there, giving them a, a slightly higher energy state, and that then might be re-released as heat, for example, so the wall will warm up just a little bit, but we'll see purple. When you have then this electromagnetic force, so photons traveling at different frequencies so the visible spectrum of light is a very narrow section of frequencies which happen to be the right frequencies to interact with human cells uh, our eyeballs for example so we can see stuff you go less than that we're going to infrared which we feel as heat but we can't see unless we have infrared cameras and you go lower than that and you end up with microwaves which our wi-fi routers mobile phones and microwave ovens operate at and you go lower than that, you're talking about uh, radios, like FM radio, you go down to AM radio, you go down to radar, and that's sort of as low as we care to go about. And then the higher frequencies go up uh, into the ultraviolet, the soft X-rays, hard X-rays, gamma rays, and, and so on. Cosmic rays, uh, which 
come from suns and nuclear explosions and goodness knows what else. So what gives it this, these, the properties is the frequency. So a photon travels at the speed of light, quite obviously. And it, tra it were, runs as a wave, as we know, and a particle, but as a wave. And it, has, uh, it goes up and down at a certain pace. But it's traveling always at the same speed. So all photons travel at the same speed for the sake of argument. So someone, some you know, you know, real physics nerd out there might come and say, well, it does depend on what medium it's traveling through. And, well, but let's correct this on. But let's, but let's, let's talk about in, in the, you know, the ideal sort of states here. So that means then that the faster that a photon is vibrating, head going up and down, the shorter will be its wavelength because it's traveling at a constant speed. So it goes up and down faster and faster, then it has a shorter and shorter wavelength which is why we go from radio, radar waves to very long wavelength, mm -hmm. uh, like football field type length. And they'll travel a long distance but carry very little energy, which is great um, for radar. It's also the wavelength then, to an extent, determines what sorts of objects it'll interact with. So a basic aerial to pick up a radar or any of these things needs to be, say, half the wavelength. So if you've got something that, as a wavelength about size of say 100 meters, it will tend to be absorbed by uh, and interact with objects that are about 50 meters. So if you're trying to pick up on airplanes and ships, you want wavelengths that are you know going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 meters long. So you're picking up these big objects. If you want to communicate with a mobile phone, mm -hmm. it needs to be really small wavelengths, like micrometer, you know, millimeter wavelengths, so that your mobile phone doesn't have to have a one and a half meter aerial. Right. If you look at your old FM radios, you have like the telescoping aerials that <laughs> come out. Now, they would be about a meter or so. Yeah, I was going to say about a meter long. Yeah. Uh, because the wavelength of FM radio is such. So he's saying he needs to get his EMP device, so an electromagnetic pulse device, to the right frequency. And that's because these alien drones will have, they're of a certain size and their electronics inside, their, their critical components that are vulnerable, right. will be of a certain configuration, um, a certain amount of uh, magnetic interaction and size. And all of these things play a part then in what sorts of EM radiation, you know, photons, they will um, be excited by. Mm. Because they're, they're metal, they've got free electrons, they'll, they'll conduct electricity. So if you get the right frequency hitting an aerial of metal, you will vibrate the electrons in the metal. And because electrons in metal can flow, you'll induce a current. And that current then, because it's uh, not a just a steady state wave, it's actually a, a sudden pulse. It's like getting a sudden slap in the face. Okay. And if you shoot enough of those photons in that pulse at any given bit of electronics, then you can overload its circuitry. The wires in your CPU are nanometer, 14 nanometer wide. It's like much less than a hair's width. So it doesn't take a lot of a pulse, but you'd need quite a, a short wavelength to you know, burn those wires out. And the mat, yeah. So he had to tune his EMP device to get the right frequency to match the um, yes. drones. And because the drones are communicating by some means, and that will inevitably be by radio waves, EM so do, frequencies. So do you agree that it would have had to be very close to the mothership to bring yeah, the Yeah, so that, that would be a combination then of the um, how directed they were, how many, how many photons they were creating with their blast. It was a small device and it looked like it went in all directions. Yeah. So you've got an inverse cube law. So every one unit you move away in distance, you've got one, you know, a cube root um, intensity. Right. So right next to it, you might have, and I'm going to go cube roots. Let's see what's a cube, <laughs> cube root you nine number. So you talk it through. Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's go sixteen. Okay. A power of sixteen. If you go one meter away, then it's going to be the cube root of sixteen, which is going to be two to the power of two to the power of two. So it'll be intensity of two. Right. Have I got that right? Two. Probably intensity of four. Now that's square two. two. So the intensity of two. <laughs> so you can see it's eight times weaker, one meter away. You go two meters away, it's eight times weaker again. 
And so, yeah, 100 meters away, yeah. you, you know, you can have a very intense blast there, but 100 meters away, it's, it's, the, the intensity is much lower. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you'd have to have it close. Uh, you'd have to have it tuned to the right frequency because mm -hmm. uh, they're not dealing with a nuclear weapon here. A nuclear bomb going off in the atmosphere produces uh, an EMP across uh, a very wide spectrum of frequencies. Like, it's crazy damaging, which means that, you know, things from power lines down to circuitry in your car will react and get burnt out. And yeah, there's proposed weapons which are EMP nuclear bombs which don't spread much radiation or have much ground damage because you detonate them up quite high where the atmosphere is just right. And but they will shed an enormous EMP over a very wide space and like destroy power lines, knock out unprotected electronics, knock down aeroplanes, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's quite good. I've, the, the downside, of course, is the size of the device he had was not large enough to contain the capacitors required to produce the amount of energy required to produce an EMP that would actually right. knock down a spaceship. But for the sake of, um, and most, and most non-nuclear EMPs are actually created by vigorous chemical reactions, as they're called, explosions. Mm -hmm. So you'd, you'd have a, a, a bomb and it would blow up. Uh, you know, a shaped charge in a certain way to emit in a, usually in a direction because uh, that way you have a greatest intensity for the longest distance. But for the sake of the movie, we didn't have to go into that sort of level of detail. No, no. They had, perhaps he had something salvaged from on the drones. They yeah. clearly had a lot of power available to them. Mm. Perhaps he had a bit of salvaged drone material yeah, in there. I mean, it wasn't pretty, I mean, to me it looked like a pretty big bomb. Yeah, but it didn't, no, actually, didn't, it didn't actually explode people. No. Which it, it would have needed. It would have had to have done to produce enough energy. Right. So I think they got a bit of drone technology as the yeah. power source for there. That would be the way to, to say it because the drones are already running on a technology greater than well, what we could understand. Isn't that part of the conductor? So, but then it was because it was it was kind of shot, wasn't it? In the yeah, oh. yeah, the, the battery got shot. Yeah. So so then he was just battery, you know, energizing it. But it was it was a nice weakness for them to, to point out that yeah, these things are, are drones that are chock full of electronics. That's right. They clearly uh, interacted. You know, there's a lot of static electricity around them and things, and they had to communicate yeah. with their mothership. So yeah, if you did get the right frequency, you could overload their aerial. And basically switch them all off. And the, the photographer had said, you know, the storm came and then it was as though they overrid the yeah. power. Yeah, took, uh, power took over our power source, you know. And so I guess the thing with that is, like, they're running off human power, aren't they? You know, they're running off how we understand power, yeah. electricity. That's not to say from where these aliens come from, electricity could be different. Well, they, they could certainly generate it. It could be just totally different. So, but maybe that's the. But, but then also maybe that's the trick, isn't it? They come down and they energize their drones with local power, you know, so that they're tolerable to the conditions or something. No, I don't know. You know. Yeah. Like, who knows? It would make a lot of sense. But all that stuff you just even said, I mean, it's surprising that there's not more EMP weapons being used, but maybe it's more of like where we are now as society, like it would make more sense than well, it's if you go back to World War One and World War Two, like got, uh, cyber warfare coming in. Yeah. EMP weapons are becoming more interesting. Well, that's right. They're not as, uh, because we don't want to use nuclear ones. A nuclear one you could take out. You know, a city's power supply. That's what I mean. Like, so wouldn't forth. that but, make a lot of sense to do yeah, that? Yeah, except nobody wants to drop a nuclear bomb. No. But you could make a much smaller charge. So you have your um, primary data exchange yeah. sitting in a building. Like in Perth, if you look near the, you know, in between the train station and the um, stadium there, there's like a, a big Telstra building which basically has no windows. Or, or it's just a big brick tower and with no windows that's that's telstra's primary data exchange right there yeah, yeah. switch yeah 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 all you'd have to do is yeah get yourself a a, a missile and they've got this on cruise missiles say like a cruise missile comes flying in and rather than trying to penetrate and explode in there it just has to sort of fire off a little mp through the wall yep so you can get in quite close there you'd be, you'd be within five meters of the primary exchange so you'd cause some damage by an explosion but the primary damage would be the fact that you burnt out everything in there, mm. which means you can't get anything running again until you go and replace everything. Mm. It would, yeah, even if the blast didn't get it, because those switching things aren't terribly effective. Unless the blast actually burns them up, it won't really hurt them. But an EMP 
will we'll burn them out and you'd have to replace the whole whole contents of that building would have to be replaced. So if ASIO is listening right now. And they are. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you know, you're the prime suspect here, yeah. sorry. That's, all, that's no. what I'm just going to say. I'm just going to point it's all well, directions. Well I have no idea what an EMP, I can't even say EMP. So, well you know, documented on Wikipedia. <laughs> that's right. And so I, just, I, just outlining how you would take out the Perth Yeah, I just um, need a cruise missile. Change, right? right, just need a cruise missile. Can't you, you can get one of them off Gumtree. Like Kai New Zealand built one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm <laughs> just, sure I'm sure you could get one off Gumtree if you really wanted to. Come on, surely. Cruise eBay, eBay. eBay. Well, I'd go talk to that dude in New Zealand who made a... He, he, he got caught before. He wasn't trying to be malicious about it. He was actually documenting it, saying, like, he, I think it was like a science teacher or something. Yeah. And he was actually sort of going in here. Here we go. We've got you know, the rocket body and we just need a rocket motor. Uh, I don't think he actually got the rocket motor, but he... He used a, an Xbox because mm-hmm. uh, the Xbox Connect had the 3D processing from the two yeah. cameras. Yeah. And so it, there was like a um, guidance system in there. And he had basically all the parts. He's just buying online just bits and pieces. And they found it. And, yeah, it was apparently it could well have, you know, if you put an, a warhead on there and a rocket motor on there, you'd have a guided missile, yeah, which yeah. could have been programmed to GPS coordinates. Yeah. Well, I, look, I, and again... I'm not saying this for ATO purposes, but quite often the freeway, Quinana Freeway North, I don't know about you, but is it sodium nitrate? Is that right? Or is it... Um, sodium nitrate's in preserved foods. Yeah, maybe it's... But it's, it's, it's So you see it on the back of trucks and it's, it's oh, got big ammonium, warnings. Yeah, ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. I mean, is that an explosion or what? Is yeah, that, if, is, if, if you that put a detonator... yeah. But if that overturned, like if it just spills, I mean, it's mixed not a big with deal. diesel, yeah, that's when it blows up. So if you, so you, so if if you took, because I mean, you see that on the back of trucks, like it, it's yeah, they've got kilos. those big, those big uh, square like meter, those meter cube yeah. bags of Ooh. ammonium nitrate. And it's got huge yeah, warnings. If, if it like, crashed into um, you know some cars and spilled everywhere, yeah, it would go up. Yeah. Absolutely, it would. And I mean, I'm sure that the WA police and uh, you know probably all across Australia, they and firefighters, they probably have a whole protocol to clean that oh, stuff yeah. up, right? But it's like. I always think I like. I also geez. monitor the sale of large amounts of ammonium. Yeah, because it's it's used as a fertilizer. Yeah, and, that's and right. Industrial purposes. Yeah. So there's reason for having it. That's right. But the I think it was the Oklahoma City bombing was a van full of basically fertilizer and diesel. Yeah, yeah. So if you, but that, I've always thought that because I've overtaken that car. I've seen it on the train. Sorry, I've ta- overtaken it in my car and I've, I've seen that truck like it's a semi trailer truck full of those white tubs. Huge warnings on them, and I just think, shit, wouldn't take much. I mean, what do you need to detonate that? I mean, yeah. it's not much, is it? But not really what I want to do, ASIO, just so you know. But I'm yeah, just, but I just think the, it's like, geez. The tanker trucks are in the same city, or the, or the gas tanks, the LPG yeah. trucks. Surely that nitrate would do a bigger damage, but I really do. Uh, well, the, and when you talk to a science guy, a science teacher, like I, I mean, you, you, like you mentioned before, building the warhead for science purposes. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> well, it, is, it is a pretty cool project, yeah. really. But it's the same with a couple of science teachers that I know. Like, you'll talk to them and they're like, oh, yeah, you just want to blow something up? No worries. <laughs> like, and again, for ASIO purposes, not at all anything negative, but it's just like they go, oh, it only takes this and this. Like, you know, the nice. anarchist cookbook. All right, let's put well, ourselves on that list. Well, you, you, could, you, you know. Wanna, well, yeah, <laughs> well, I read that back in uni, back before it was a, a thing. Um, yeah. Well, I think um, if you probably order that, ASIO will, will put you on there. Men- yeah, I mean, it doesn't have particularly good information, but certainly that sort of bomb, that, that's what the, you know, what they call improvised explosive devices and things are that they worry about when they're, they're going through Iraq and yeah, places right. and Afghanistan because they have, yeah, fertilisers. You, you put a bit of fertiliser in a... Because one of the reasons it's not such a problem on the truck is because it's not contained. That's right. You'll get a terrible fire and you'll get fumes and smoke. It will be terribly dangerous. But the real problem would be is if you put it in a contained space like a barrel. Yeah. And then you put um, something to ignite the whole thing in there. Yeah. And you you turn into a bomb. And that's why bombs have steel casings. Because when you you contain the explosion, you get a sudden release of explosive Mm. rather than sort of a a fizzle, if you like. So but this can, EMP has the equivalent in would be capacit- capacitors because batteries can't discharge fast enough, but supercapacitors can discharge. They can hold you know, you know megavolts of power yeah. and discharge in you know fraction of a second. 
which means you'd be able to get that real yeah. kapow. So you're saying that the EMP needs still needs an igniter, basically. It needs to Yeah, be... you, you have to have a, a sudden, like a real charge. In fact, there's an EMP device in this very room. Oh. There's probably several. The Jeepers. To light up these, is listening now. To, listen, to light up these fluorescent tubes. Oh, fluorescent tube! You'll, you'll see in the middle there. There's like that little fluorescent tube, little round bit. There's a little capacitor and bits and pieces, and you flick the light switch on, and the fluorescent tube. You'll hear a little click, click. Yeah. And then the light will kind of shoot up. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, like using uh, an EMP mm. to um, energize the fluorescent light. The uh, what? Do they use inside there, like oh, like halogen or, or yeah. one of these sort of um, compounds, mm. which will then interact with the fluorescent coating? So just so ASIO knows, so, we are just talking about a standard house yeah. fluorescent light. Yeah, I don't know oh, how yeah, big yeah. a fluorescent light you need <laughs> yeah. to take down a computer. That's right. Well, yeah. But you'll you'll notice actually if you were trying to record something with your mobile phone, and you turn on the light, you you'll get interference. Yeah, you will. That's a very little EMP. It is still nonetheless yeah, an right. EMP. Mm. So I think I think going forward with you know any sort of warfare, I mean, it has to be a thing that military must. I mean, well, I don't yeah. know, I don't know, but it with must all, be something that they were seriously investigating. So with cyber warfare, the problem is you do have to, as as he said, you've got to get the right frequencies. So yeah. the sort of EMP that would take out say computers won't touch power lines yeah and the sort of one that will take out your power supply like a but then maybe it won't harm cars and computers yeah but then maybe that's why like as you said before no one wants to do the nuclear maybe that's a good maybe that's you know that's the thing because you want to take out the 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 internet and you want to take out radio and you want to take out mobile phones so you need different bombs anyway you know what i mean like yeah. having just one big nuclear sure take out the whole city but the destruction of that puts you as the bad guy whereas little bombs that can tailor different communication channels all of a sudden a country or a city's crippled isn't it really quickly you know yeah it's crazy and especially you know with the whole um future of the internet you know the 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 smart technology that's coming and and they do that with satellites yeah if you want to take out a satellite yeah there's one way you can actually just like hit it with something Yeah. yeah But it often it's quite difficult because they're moving very fast and there's a lot of them up there. And there's a lot of space. But if you can get a, an EMP site warhead within, you know, some yeah, radius of it, you'd get it, then you don't actually have to destroy it. You only have to, say, cripple its microphone. That's right. Oh, no, it's microphone. It's antenna. Yeah. So it can't receive signals anymore or can't transmit. Yeah. And then the country's and then out. Yeah. That satellite may as well be destroyed. Mm. Yep, oh. it's just space junk. There you go. <laughs> so let's let's talk about some of the um, filmmaking. Projects. Well, you've mentioned a couple of the sound. You know, definitely the sound. You yeah. know? And I've noticed this. We you know, last last episode with the darkest uh, dawn. You know, the sound of the aliens really important. We go right back to things like in Independence Day. The sound of aliens um, when they are this big war of the worlds. You know, you know, like coming out out of the ground and. Again, I mean, the mother ships, the mother ships in this particular film, Revolt, were a bit like war. Uh, well, that War of the Worlds, you know, they were sort of like tentacles yeah, they coming were, out of an actual spaceship. A pleasantly alien appearance. Yeah, like it, it, it always is a bit. It's kind of a reoccurring maybe fear that people do have uh, of aliens is that sort of I suppose probing. You know, tentacle arms reaching down yes. to the planet it's when to see tentacles or, or insectile sort of yeah, bug. Weird, weirdly jointed, pointy limbs. Yeah, you know, sort of. Yeah, so again, alien to to what we sort of think of. Mm. Um, I I did think you know like straight away because I've I've heard other scientists and psychologists talk about this like spiders are a massive fear for humans. Like it's an ongoing fear, you know. And so when those spider drones turned up, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, the spider. Because <laughs> just naturally we all kind of freak out by a spider, right? Like Too many legs. Too many legs. They creep up the walls, up the roof. They, they can ha- dangle. Move they move like... strange compared to what we're used to. And once it's really big as well, it's like, oh, you know. And th- those drones were pretty much just spiders. They just were. Like they had the fangs and everything. Yeah, I, think. Yeah, I know. That, that got me as well. as those yeah. little, little mouth parts yeah, yeah. twitching. <laughs> But how do the aliens know? They're like researched humans. They don't like spiders. Okay, make the drones spiders. <laughs> I bet they don't like spiders. Too. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so sound, I think, is was very good. Uh, we had, as you mentioned, the music, the beats. I liked that. To me, it was it was again. We have this in a lot of films to build tension. Is heartbeat. There was moments of heartbeat, but not a traditional heartbeat. But it was there. It's it was an electronic electronic version of the heartbeat. Um, the roars of the drones and the screeches and the the grinding of metal. Uh, many films, Darkest Dawn did it. This, these guys did it just a bit differently. I'm kind of really attuned to listen to it, and I think this film uh, ramped it up in the right moments. You know, there's there's some scenes very early in the film that you don't see the drones, but you hear them. Yes. And I always love that. I love that in films, not seeing everything. You know, like it's off screen, it's there. Characters react. Uh, as we saw, we saw soldiers get annihilated, buildings being, you know, crumbled and stuff. And you're hearing things, but you don't get to see it. Uh, and as I said, like when he escaped from the police cell very early and he hops in the car, it's like he looks in the rear view, view mirror in the car. And uh, so you sort of see the legs, you know what I mean? But you don't see the whole thing. Um, and, I, and I love that. And the sound is what makes that. So that was really, really there. Some good scary tones. Um, and all, all of those those bits work together really well. So I loved the sound. I thought the sound was great. And I know you've mentioned a bit about it. Yeah, I noticed a couple of these shots were well-timed to the sound. Yep. So there was, um, particularly towards the end there, there was a, a bit of a build-up when they said, yeah, we've got to evacuate, and a, dun, 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 yeah, and a bit yeah. of a heartbeat. And then it, it had like a bit of a boom, and it cut immediately to the, a new scene. Uh, and then there was just the heartbeat sort of beat. Yeah. Doo, doo, doo. Again, it wasn't now, an actual heartbeat, like films use heartbeat. No, but it was, it was, it was, it was an electronic drum, yeah. If, yeah. if you like. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but it, it, was a, it gave that effect of, yes, a, of a beat, yeah. Definitely. Um, the other thing, I mentioned the world looks apocalyptic. And, it, you know, like, okay, stereotype. And look, we might be totally wrong here. But Africa, Kenya, you know, it's been a lot of war. There's a lot of disrupted civilization. White people, you know, a couple of hundred years ago were tormenting and ripping up the earth. And then ever probably probably since then, there's been all sorts of horrible wars and stuff, kicking the white people out, you know, fighting over, uh, over land and minerals and, you know. And so, sure, you can look at a country like this and see devastation. It's, it's probably, it probably exists there. You know, like it, it's more yeah, there. There'd, there'd than, be scars left. There'd be everything. scars left, and and so that's there. But to me, it felt very post-apocalyptic, and in a really nice way. And I mean, um, and that's the thing: the landscape naturally probably looks a bit like that. You get that a bit in. We have country towns here in WA that were really big, bustling towns because of gold or a particular mineral, and overnight they've become ghost towns. Um, and we were, even that town. Do you, what's the name of that town with the asbestos? The asbestos town. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, you know, again. And you're allowed to go there. Well, you're not allowed to go there, but people go there, you know. And, um, you know, they go there at their own uh, risk of life, you know. And there's a couple other towns around. I think I mentioned maybe on the previous episode or not that I saw that dark tourist where you went to that Japanese coal um, village, yeah. village on an island that overnight Japan just said, well, we don't need to use the coal anymore and, you know, 5,000 people were evacuated off this island. Now, 30 years later, it's a ghost town. And so it's it's kind of creepy. And they did that well in this film. You know, they work, walk through these abandoned houses, factories, things, etc. And maybe they've been abandoned because of the aliens. Maybe they were already abandoned. And then they've just now decayed even more, you know. But it does give you a sense of hopelessness, etc. But on top of that, I think what the filmmakers did really well was and something i noticed very early in the film and it's continue is smoke so there's a lot of smoke there's a lot of fog there's a lot of mystery in what's going on and some of it is given to us like there's little patches of fire i know in the red car scene that you're so (laughs) adamant about um you know they're driving along the freeway there's actually little spot fires everywhere but in other scenes you don't see the fires but there's lots of smoke there's also lots of wide shots where there's billowing smoke, yeah, you know, in the hills and black column big black, and, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, even when he goes to the base, you know, the building is really, it's obviously been torched quite recently. Um, but it seemed that to me, like throughout the whole film, there was smoke and fog and, you know, burning bits and pieces. And I guess, you know, symbolically you can kind of say, well, 
yeah, the country's on fire. You know, the the, yeah. the world's on fire because of these drones. The world's at war. Um, so that's the case. But I like that. It gives a very um, mystery feel. You're not too sure what's beyond the smoke. You know, you're not. What's well, in the opening scenes where you could hear the noises and there was just sort of stepped around the corner. There's just a wall of smoke at the end yeah. of the little laneway. Yep. And someone comes running out and they get wiped out. Yeah. And you hear the noises, the mechanical noises, but then that moves yeah. on. The camera and the soldiers move on. Yep. So you don't see it. So you, you, you see get that, the, the, a bit of claustrophobia, a bit of something moving in the dark, but it's yep. bright light, white, yep. white light. So yeah, I, I liked it. I picked it up. It was, I, I think, you know, like, I mean, you could say, you know, someone else could say it's overused, but I, I liked it. I thought it was really cool. Um, symbol throughout the film cinematography was really beautiful in this film this was you know something that they took in those landscapes uh, they followed it pretty traditionally there's some beautiful drone shots people out there that are interested in that you know uh, we had the flying drones not flying the yeah the drones of drones. the camera the camera being on a drone yeah um, it's a big rage now because obviously those camera drones are, are affordable and easy to use and people are becoming experts at using them. So. Well, it allows these sort of budgets in here because previously if you wanted to have uh, some sweeping Aerial across shot. the yep. light, you'd have to get a helicopter. Dropper. Yep. And then you'd have to get like an experienced helicopter yep. cameraman yep. who can, and you've got to get, make sure you get the shots without the shadow. That's right. And without the wind blowing everything yep. apart. Yep. Whereas now you can have a drone and all you have to do is just turn the sound off because yep. you don't want the, the whining noises. Yep. The drone, but that's not a problem. No, no, and, and the drones are more flexible. You know, they can go really low and really high and all sorts of stuff. So, But I thought cinematography-wise, I think when you take things like depth and rule of thirds with the drones, they, they were some really beautiful landscape mm-hmm. shots. The, the road they drove down sort of snaked around and uh yeah I, I loved it i love that sort of stuff personally so it, it kept me going um throughout yeah so lots of sort of really good technical things i also then thought plot wise i know we've gone through it detail and we won't go again but like it was fast like we said with the darkest dawn yeah. you know we started with action then he wakes up he's got amnesia we're unsure what's going on uh you know he meets nadia quickly there you know then there's suddenly action to get out of the prison um, then they're on the road, but they're not on the road for very long that they're confronted with problems. You know, there's problem after problem after problem. Um, and, you know, and then she's, you know, sucked up and disappeared. And, you know, and then he's plotting on and he's injured and, you know, the base isn't there. So, so again, like the, pl- the plot didn't slow down. And I, and I mean, I think personal preference, I really like that. You know, like keep me going, keep me dangling. It works, you know, it works it, very well in this action. Yeah. Uh, we'll get... The news of the world introduced through these action yeah, sequences, right. rather than a big, like speech. You know, yeah, there's no big spiel. It would have been easy for him to get to the military base, and he finds a surviving officer yeah. who gives him a briefing. Yep. But then we find out that officer is mortally wounded, and so can't come with him. That's right. So you go. The only reason of having that officer there was to do a big exposition. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, look, the photographer did a bit of that, but the photographer also. It was nice that they made it about, oh, the, he's like, oh, I was following these uh, wounded kids of war and they stood up to him. So, like, he gave us the invasion in a series of quick photos, but it was more about the kids and the humanity. Mm, you know? I, so it was more I like the, the way it, it wasn't just a still shot. It was kind no. of, uh, presumably his camera did does yeah. this. I know, I know my phone has you, yeah. but you capture maybe sort of the second or so before. So yes, you've got like right. a slight animation yeah. into the still shot. Yep. Which really gave a good sense a of, good of the action yep. and what was going on there. So I think, again, yeah, like, you know, camera, great, really beautiful cinematography. Sound was fantastic, as you, we've talked a lot about it. You know, the, the sounds of the machines, also the beats. It was a bit 80s, 90s, uh, you know, um, disco <laughs> Uh, going on and also yeah things like the smoke make it quite an interesting depth symbolism going on there and uh, yeah the drones as well if you're into the drone shots check it out I think it's well worth it. Uh, Excellent so I mean in summary then there was uh, a fun I think exciting and interesting action movie it had a nice sort of uh, reveal there with the tracker it uh, had plenty of action there with a nice uh, nicely designed alien robots which looked bizarre with their little skinny waist and their yep. glowing orb of Light. power there and, the, and they were asymmetrical they had the yeah they didn't have two arms they had like one sort of 
weird gun thing that would snap open and yeah. then sort of spit out yes. this energy ball uh, and the, the noises they make. Mm. And we end up with a, a scene where the, the stakes have been raised because we've got a whole hospital full of people. Yep. So the character, uh, Bo, has been you know, starting to get back memories. He's, he's been touched romantically by this um, um, doctor. You know, he's sort of got a bit of connection there. He met the photographer and got a bit of that other that human spirit yep. connection. And then finally the confrontation there where he he expresses all of those things. Yes, yeah, he does. And um, and that sort of wins the day. Well, it doesn't end the whole war. No. But no. that wasn't the point. The point was no. it it showed the, the dominance of human spirit, I suppose. Yeah, and like, like that was the thing I, as I said, going to recap for me, that idea of... You know, and it probably is the title, Revolt, you know, like revolt against the power, isn't it? You know, like stand up to the power. And I think humans, if we band together, we can overcome something yeah, like this. Yeah, again, you know, it's, like, it's a bit sad, though, that it takes an alien in. It always seems to take yeah, an alien invasion. Or something like that, doesn't or it? Or a natural disaster. Zombie apocalypse yeah, or something zombie to, apocalypse. to actually make people go, you know what, these other fights are having kind of a little bit petty. They are, they are, yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a shame, it's... It would it'd be nice if we were to pull together a bit more when it came to like, you know. The, Before the aliens come, couldn't we just kind of put our smarts together and, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's funny, isn't it? And, I mean, that, that difference between the gorillas that come and attack at the start, you know, that they're obviously, you know, self, um, you know, they're just very selfish in what they want, you know. Oh, we'll take the woman, obviously, you know, for sexual reasons. We'll take the man for money. You know, like we'll take weapons. They they murder another man because he's just a foreigner. Yeah, just like brutally chopping up with a. And we machine. see this a lot. Again, I keep saying the Walking Dead. It's the same the Walking Dead kind of idea. Like, what value does this human have? And then yet the other people are debating. Well, you know, we're humans. Like, if we stick together, we'll probably be stronger. You know, we'll yeah. probably be smarter. We'll probably be you know better together and and live together. You know, in this new world. Um, so it's always that debate and you see that here. And I guess at the hospital at the end, that's what those people were doing, weren't they? They were just like, well, because they save him, they help him, they help Bo, don't they? You know, so it's like, well, we help each other and we, re- you know, we rescue each other against this outside force. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, so that was Revolt. Yep. 2017. Writ- written by Joe Miali and Rowan uh, Atoll, I think. Atoll. At- Atoll. Yeah. Or is it also a tally? I don't know. Atale, <laughs> Athale. Ah, oh, look, Rowan and Joe, just get just, in touch. Just you know, cause send us a DM. We're going to struggle with this constantly. <laughs> uh, directed by Joe as well, starring Lee Pace and dare I try to say Nadia uh, Ber- Bernice. Let's let's use. I think it's Bernice. Anglicisation there, Bernice. Benice, a French actress. Uh, Which was, both of uh, them yeah. did a great job of this. Yeah, you know? excellent. They were really good. And I, I said to Surrey earlier before we started recording that Lee Pace, I mean, I reckon this guy, this guy could be a superstar. You know, I really reckon. Yeah, there's, there's no reason it's, to not think that. He's one role away, I reckon, from a Hollywood superstar. At the, at the very end of that, I was thinking he's got that sort of leather jacket on, he's all yeah. grubby and he's been picked up. Mm. It reminded me very much of, say, Mad Max. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. So he, he had that, that same sort of, I suppose, grimy determination yeah. about him. Yeah. Definitely. So next week... We're going to go to a classic. Oh, yeah. A super mega classic. I've never seen it. So maybe I have to hand in my nerd card until <laughs> I have. It's 2001 Space Odyssey. It's by the great Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. So I'm, I've seen little bits of it. Obviously, I've heard parts of the soundtrack. Yeah. I know all about how. I don't know all about how, but I know the <laughs> the scene. How open you the will bay finally doors. be enlightened about how open the bay doors. How? No, yep. I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave. But the whole rest of it, I have no clue about. And as I understand it, the book is more revealing of everything, but. I'm going to go into this one as we do with all of them. Yep, enjoy of watching. To observe and enjoy what I get out of it. Yeah. And we'll we'll report back on that one. We will. That will be episode 10 of Space Brains, which so is exciting. Ten. So I look forward to watching that. I have seen it a couple of times, but it's been a long time now. So I'm looking forward to going back and having a look at that. 
And if you're out there, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, pretty much just look for Space Brains Podcasts and you'll find us. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you can email us. Yeah. Spacebrains at gravityundone.net. Yep. The Gravity Undone website to download these podcasts or, you know, out there on Get Spotify, on etc. Let us know what you think about Revolt. Uh, the 2017 film and think also about our ep- this episode what you thought about our opinions and positions on things of this film and our continuing inability to uh, come up with a reasonable pronunciation for the actors and the directors <laughs> of these films well all of these people could just message us they could I, they could get in touch I, I've, I've, I've reached, no I reached out to uh, a couple of the guys from Spectrum yeah so uh yeah, the the guys who played the two main characters. Yeah, yeah I just totally forgotten that. Okay, that's all right. But you reached out to them. They'll they know reaching. who I am. That's right. <laughs> and and they haven't gotten back yet. But I'm sure they will. They I'm will sure. eventually when they when they uh, get a chance to listen to the review and that's right. That we loved it. When they realise how important Space Brains is out there on the yeah. internet <laughs> of podcasts. So mm-hmm. until next time, yep. see ya. See you later. Have a good one.